Okay, so another idea that I had to uh, practice these array basics, creating arrays, accessing the elements, traversing them, was to make an, an, an array visualizer, kind of like a bar graph. So we can create an array of numbers and then draw the heights of that correspond to the values in the array. So I'm going to start this from scratch. Well, not quite scratch. I have a canvas animation template. So I want to draw it uh, on the canvas, the bars on the canvas. So I'm going to start with this template here. Let's rename this to Array Visualizer. Visualizer. Awesome. Okay, open this up with code. Um, I'll include this template in the video description if you want to download it. It should just be a basic, there's a canvas, and I've got a style sheet that just gives it a little bit of a border, and it sets up my canvas and my request animation frame. Oh, you know what? I should have my new graphics library. Um, you know, I don't know if I'll bother with the graphics library here because I just need to draw rectangles, but uh, I could definitely use the graphics library. Okay, so let's launch this. And it should just be basic template, open up the console in case there's any error messages that show up. All right. So let's go up here before the main program loop and let's create my global variable. Um, global variables, we'll see if we need more than one. And I'm going to have let's, I'm just going to call it my array. And I'm going to make it be some numbers. The height of canvas of the canvas is 600, so I'll keep it between 0 and 600. So let's go 500, 200, 350, 400, maybe a 580, 170, 225, 600, and 325. Whatever numbers you want. Okay. So now the idea is, actually, how many values do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's just do eight values. Um, because then to start off with, since the width is 800, each of my bars can be a width of 100. Okay, we'll just start off easy that way and we'll get into maybe some more math later on. So let's start off with just drawing it. I have this clear rectangle. Um, draw bars, bar graph kind of thing. And I guess essentially, let's start it just really basic. Um, let's do a fill style, I don't know, orange, orange bars, why not? And then I will do a context.fill rectangle. Now to start off with, just to make it easier again, well, no, I think we can handle this. I want to draw the bar graph from the bottom. So when I draw a rectangle, I have, um, I have to give the top left corner and then the width and the height. So if my height is 500, I actually want to draw it at 100, right? And then 500 down will get me to the bottom because I want a vertical bar graph. So I just need to take the height of the canvas and subtract the height of the bar in order to get that top Y value. So I'm just going to do, well, X will be zero. The Y value will be canvas.height minus my array at position zero. Right, which is the value that 500, and then I want the width to be 100, and I want the height to be my array at position zero, and that should hopefully draw I draw that bar. Okay, and then I can just copy and paste this and change it to position one, but I'm also going to need to change this to 100. Right, so the next one will be 100 pixels over to the right. The x value will be 100. The height will be take away my array 1. So um, 600 take away 200. Should draw at 400. Um, the width will be 100, and my array 1 will be the height of it. And I should have a bar right there. Awesome. And then I would continue. Copy and paste. This time I move this to 200. This time I go to position 2, position 2 etc. And now hopefully you guys are saying, why are you copying and pasting Mr. Bellcamp? Don't you know you should use a loop for this? Absolutely. So let's go and use that wonderful loop to traverse an array, right? Starting from zero to the length of the array. In this case, zero to seven, because there's eight elements. So I'm going to go four, let i be zero, i is less than 
myarray.length. And I want to do dot length because what if I added some values, right? We want to keep this dynamic, so it'll change. I plus plus. Let's copy this and paste it. And now, easy things to change. We want my array at position I. And the other thing that changes is the X value. And if you'll notice, at position 0, it was 0. At position 1, it was 100. At position 2, it was 200. So I think I can just go I times 100. Okay, and then I should be able to get rid of this. And go back to here, and I've got my bar graph. So now if I were to swap values, make this 200 and this 500, it should change, right? 200, 500, etc. Okay, cool. Um, the only other thing I might think here is that it might be nice to have a bit of an outline. So let's go stroke style is assign gray. And then I will do a fill rect, and then I will do a stroke. Actually, I'll just copy and paste uh, a stroke rect over top of it to draw an outline. It should work, I think. Yeah, you can kind of see the, the outline of the bar is a little better that way. Okay, cool. So again, the, the key here is we've created this array. I'm accessing the elements in the array with the index operator, the square brackets. Um, I'm using a loop to traverse the array, draw this bar, 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 all the way to the end. Um, so these are the main concepts in order to draw that we need for array basics in order to draw this. Now I want to improve this program a little bit so that it can be dynamic. Um, for example, I want to calculate this every time. Okay, so in the logic here, I'm going to create a variable here called... Um, uh, can I keep it a local variable? I guess I could. Let um, bar width be assigned. And what I'm thinking I could do is just take the number of elements, so the length, my array dot length, and divide that by, oh no, hold on. I need to take the width of the canvas, and divide that by how many elements, right? How many bars I want to draw. So simple calculation, width of the canvas divided by how big the array is, and that'll get the bar width. And then I think I can just replace 100, I hit Control H, and replace 100 with bar width. Four times it shows up, replace, cool. So now it should recalculate the width that I need and use that to move the x value over um, depending on how many elements are in there. Let's make sure it still works for these values. Looks good. Now if I were to add a 100, get rid of that, 100, we'll see it added the 100 and everything still fits nicely. Um, let's add some more values. 550, 250, 300, uh, 650, 275. And you'll see that every time it loops, it recalculates the bar width based on the length of the array. Um, and it'll, yeah, make a nice little array visualizer. Now, what I want to do with this program is I'd like to, now that we have this array visualizer, I'd like to use this in the future for some exercises. We'll practice creating different arrays, doing patterns, doing random arrays, that kind of stuff, analyzing the values. So we'll see this program again in the future to just help us visualize arrays and what's happening with them. Okay. Um, was that all I wanted? I think so. Create the array. We're accessing the array here, right? My array I. We're looping through it, traversing based on the length. So it's dynamic, right? It'll calculate based on the new length. Looks good. Okay. Hope that made sense. Um, arrays are going to give us a lot of tools to do some cool stuff. All right. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video.